Infowars.com is tomorrow's news today. That's where we're at here. And the, the levels of lies are so intense. But here's the big news. And I'm going to cover this in the next segment. I'm going to be a good boy. This isn't about InfoWars. It's about all of us. And I've spoken in the last month with a former top, top-tier executive at Facebook. I talked last night to another individual who has one of the biggest Facebook accounts. And I talked, obviously, on air to former head of psychological operations for the State Department and he ran a major operations for the CIA, Dr. Pachinik. And then we had Zach, who's been part of major operations. I'll just leave his name at that, but he's known. His name is Zach, first name. He even lets you know he was involved trying to expose the Fort Hood shooting. He was an activist speaking out against that. So the government knows who he is. The FBI has picked him up before for speaking out, but nothing happened. Because what he was doing was patriotic and constitutional. They said, Alex, you got to get on the AI. We know you've obsessed over it over the years, but... You've not really hit, it's now on. And if you watch that meeting two months ago with Google, Facebook, and Twitter executives all in front of Congress, and they were talking about censoring InfoWars at lunch, they said, sir, within a month or two, we will have the algorithm, that means the AI in place, InfoWars will never be at the top again. And I was talking last night to this in, uh, individual, one of the biggest Facebook accounts, and he, I won't say the number because people can figure out who it is, and he said, Alex, you've got to get on this now. And he said, I'm, I'm really thinking about coming on, even though he's not a conservative, he's, he, but he's well-known. You, you know him if I said his name. He said, because I've been in the meetings, and it's horrible what they're about to do. And that's why Sean Parker's gone public and others, because, Alex, it's really evil. I mean, it is like a science fiction move, movie. Uh, it's bad. It's real bad. And... It just makes me worry about my children so, so much. And then you've got all these fools who are the last generation of not journalists, but, but hacks who were aiding the whole AI takeover that will put them all out of work. People ask how I can take so many attacks. They ask how I can take all the intense lies. And it's because I understand most of the people that are part of it are victims of brainwashing, of programming, and of societal decline. I am not a perfect person. I have bad thoughts. I do bad things sometimes, too. Most people wouldn't think they were very big deals if you knew the little things I do, but I'm still guilty about it because I feel connected to everybody. And I try to do unto others as I'd have them do unto me. The news I'm about to lay out to you is so powerful, so incredible, so important, so all-encompassing the total future destiny of our species, this planet and everything on it, and more, that I hesitate because I don't feel worthy to bring you this information. Now information is accelerating so fast that what happened a year ago, things that sounded crazy a year ago are now openly admitted. A year ago, I was on Joe Rogan's podcast, biggest podcast in history, now, reportedly, it's up to 50-something million views on four platforms. He says it's double anything he's ever had. It was in early February. I talked about AI supercomputers, how the elite worship them, how they want to merge with them, how they're going to turn everything over to algorithms that can then manipulate and control masses of people and predict the future and even control the future of human activity. I got attacked for that in newspapers, which memorialized that I was talking about something I've been talking about for 20 years, but that now a year later, everything I talked about in that podcast is on the news. And Elon Musk is saying the elite worship AI and believe they're going to merge with it, and there's a church of worshiping AI, and almost every person in Silicon Valley is insane now and is on all sorts of high-tech drugs and, and are you know already getting brain chips and are you know just totally crazy. There's already more than 10,000 U.S. troops when it was declassified a few years ago that have brain chips. I mean, we're way down the rabbit hole, just what we know of, with the breakaway civilization. Talk about the ultimate class separation. 
But the big news is that the AI is now in place. And it's in an accelerated learning phase. And Google, Facebook, Twitter, they are all, including Apple, coordinating some of their operations. Apple, not so much. And Apple's making the decision to go with China. They were already with them, but it's, it's a full commitment. The code keys, their main servers, their main clouds, Chinese government at the top of Google. I mean, at the top of, of uh, Apple. And I'm just giving you some background here before I get into the really, really, really big issue. And I'm just laying some of the predicate here and, and, and some of the background that you already all know about. Just remember how I told you this 10 years ago. Remember how I told you a year ago and I got made fun of. I was getting it from white papers. I was getting it from prospectus to investors. I was getting it from the people that started Google 19 years ago. What their, what their aim was. Now, what's happening? Well, let me first go over this piece of news for you. And, and please stay with us because this affects you, your family, the whole future. Look at this particular document, February 2018. This just came out a week and a half ago. Future of Human Institute, University of Oxford, Center for the Study of Existential Risk, University of Cambridge, Center for the New American Security, Electronic Frontier Foundation, OpenAI. And it's the malicious use of artificial intelligence, forecasting, prevention, and mitigation. When you get into this, you understand the reason they're using race war, class war, saying there's not two sexes, all of this. This is psychological warfare ideas then played out and tested through AI in real time on giant social network platforms, in the case of Facebook, with what? Is it close to 3 billion members last time I checked? How many members on Facebook? I think it's 3 billion. Look, look that up for me. Imagine you've got a little less than half the planet on Facebook. It's the biggest. And then you learn when Sean Parker was there, it was five to one bots that were posing as people we're saying 2.2 billion active users, but it's over 3 billion total. That it was bots keeping you alone, keeping you depressed, manipulating you, and saying things socially to you to reward your dopamine because you want social connection, but you never played on your bike, you never went outside, you never played football, you never fell out of a tree. You grew up the last two generations almost entirely inside your house watching television. Then you graduate to a computer, to an iPhone, to a system that you look through the world with that's got all these AI systems watching you that you learn to finally reach out through a television-type system, but it's interactive and meet with other people. Then they can use the bots, the, 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 the media, the culture to manipulate how you think, what you do, and by increment, get you to turn into whatever they want you. But then that's only like putting the deer feeder out with some corn to get the deer or the hogs to come in and eat a while, pretty soon you can just take the feed all away because you're done in that phase of domestication, and then you remove humans altogether. The humans are still in their cells. That's what they call them at Facebook. They call them cells, j jail cells. And so you're in a cell, and then all the humans are removed when you try to hit the publish button, it looks at what you've done, AI, they already do this, and decides if it can go forward or where it's going to go or if it fits into an algorithm they've set for social engineering to reward you with Pavlovian conditioning, with rewards, or to punish you incrementally rewiring your brain. And this is all in hundreds of white papers and the goals of the companies. It lowers IQ, it lowers your hormone levels, it basically makes you die. You're just sitting there being programmed by an AI computer that got you to come in because other people were there to interface. It studied you, it watched you, it learned how to act like a human. And now it is going to 
really begin the social engineering and absolutely make you alone except for artificial avatars you're talking to and make you pay to be able, which they already did, like if you're an advertiser or a big site to reach all your fans on Facebook or all of them on Twitter, you got to pay. Oh, everybody comes and likes you. You're the person that brings everybody. Humans come to see you, hear you, interact with you. But now there's a paywall, not just advertising, but a paywall. And then now, see, it becomes a solid wall. And even individuals with 20, 30 friends, they've got to communicate to even talk to mom or grandma. And everything they're saying is being read and being watched and being controlled. But then when we come back, I'll tell you the next phase. They admit it's actually meant to kill you. When they're done, you'll be ready to call for the euthanization van to come kill you. And that's the big secret the executives told me. It's, it's going to make you commit suicide. If you're watching on television, you see a photo from a few years ago of Mark Zuckerberg. He calls his users dumb effers. We'll put it back on screen or maybe behind me. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg that calls his users dumb effers with all of his employees with uh, virtual reality goggles on uh, sitting there looking into the universe he'd created looking into the system that he had set up so he can play God. And that's exactly as you see the classic evolution of man, if you buy into that worldview, of starting off as an ape-like uh, creature and then uh, moving up through uh, Cro-Magnon and, the and the rest of it uh, into modern Homo sapien sapien. And then now we start looking at a computer and hunching over and then uh, basically it becomes a face sucker and jumps on our face and absorbs us into the AI system. It is Elon Musk and Bill Joy and a few other big tech billionaires that have come out and warned of the consensus that humanity's over. And I showed a bunch of articles a few weeks ago out of C CNBC, you name it, of the World Government Summit in Dubai, where it was accepted that humanity will end and merge with machines sometime around 2040. They always put it out there to make you think it's coming down the road. No, it's going to be much more accelerated if we follow their plan. And we're actually talking about this. This isn't a conspiracy theory. It isn't something, you know, that I made up. This is something that was in elite discussions 20 years ago, in publications 10, 15 years ago. And now here it is. If you want to find the exact image, I talk, I, I like them to face suckers like 15 years ago, but uh, computers and, and, and smartphones when they first came out, you can actually search engine on Google the term smartphone face sucker, and there's one where it like shows a smartphone as a face sucker. It's pretty powerful. Uh, but continuing, they, it wants to take over your reality. Humans, bad actors with the AI, are already using it to surround you with fake bots who then socially, culturally, economically use peer pressure to manipulate you to behave and act and purchase and live the way they say. They can make it cool to pay more for a 250 square foot apartment than a thousand foot square apartment, as long as it's for the earth. They can get you to sterilize yourself because it's so cool. And in all the studies, it depresses you, it makes you alone. And if you go back to, uh, before Sean Parker went public and other Facebook executives last year and this year, a document came out in early 2017 from the top of Facebook out of Australia. And it said, we are victimizing people, we are controlling them, we are making them depressed, uh, we are targeting them, mainly millennials and young people, and we're using kind of a modern liberal political correctness system to control them. So... Expanding on that, as a species, we have a decision to make, and we have a discussion that needs to be had about this, and, and the folks that think they're part of the power structure and are managing this and going along with it at the lower and mid levels are really the biggest problem. Because a lot of the former top executives and even current ones are saying, whoa, 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 this thing has been engineered to be really, really bad, really, really destructive, we better do something. And there's government heat now on this as well because people realize how dangerous this is. But low level and mid level people that want political power and who want to control others, they are willing accomplices with some of the more evil executives 
who are in a race with the other companies and other governments and other combines and other power structures to get the most controlling, most dominant system that they believe will take over in a matter of hours uh, once it gets a leg up on the others. And then things will start moving so quickly that you can have the world change while you're asleep at night, forever. And that's the acceleration in technology and in development that's happening. But as the technology advancements accelerate, humans are uglier, humans are stupider, humans are weaker, humans are more evil, humans have lower brain waves and are in a sleep light, twilight zone state between consciousness and unconsciousness and are highly suggestible and are being hypnotized. And so they're hypnotized watching these comedy shows, watching these fake news shows, where they're demonizing and attacking any nationalist and calling us Nazis and calling us criminals. So when they're out on the street and they're walking by in their trance and they see you, they just sleepwalk over and attack you because they've been programmed. And if you yell back at them and say, what are you doing? A lot of them they go, whoa, whoa, what is happening? Why am I doing that? They're in a trance state. And again, there's a lot of people who know this is going on intellectually, but are so comfortable with it and have gone along with it and are part of the programming it at a low level or mid level that they just kind of snicker and giggle about it because it makes them feel powerful. This is like if you're running around with a ball of radioactive plutonium, you're like, look, I can kill people with this. If, if I just rub it on somebody, they'll die in a couple days. Yeah, but you're going to die too. You've got the plutonium, the highly radioactive weapons-grade plutonium in your hand. You're not going to get out of this either. And then a lot of them are very nihilistic, very immature, very kind of six-year-old bratish, where they make a soy boy face and go, I don't care, I don't care, and kind of do a leprechaun dance. It's, real, it's what they do, and that's programming too. And the reason the programming is also similar across the whole world is they're only activating failed human systems that were already there in the DNA, there in the consciousness. And it's, it's really scary. I mean, we're living in a science fiction movie. You look at hundreds and hundreds of photos of men, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, when they are working for the tech companies, deeply embedded in it, and, and they're bots. It's a culture. They chug pure soy. They, they, they play video games all day. They watch television all day, and their eyes all look the same. Their faces all look the same. I show that one from earlier. And then they've got scientific studies that Paul talked about in a recent report where it admits that that is a direct correlation to the amount of estrogen and the amount of screen time. So we know what these zombies look like. Look at the faces. How demonic, how vacant, how... Program. Look how sad that guy on the left is. I mean, he's even deeper. He looks like he's dying. Or I guess on your, your right. Back to the other guy. Look at that. Dead already, folks. Very, very sad. Now, he may be able to be resuscitated, but he is in a trance state. That is a full trance state. And I, I forget the term. It's called the spiral of... I was talking about this during the break. What's it called? The spiral of the spiral of silence that a minority view, like abolitionists in 1800 were about 1% of the population or 2%. It, it, if you have social bots and social pressure, if it gets attacked, it will try to self-censor. And so what they do is they have an artificial spiral of silence in these AI systems. And they have them in place so that the artificial bots come and herd you, and then the next time they herd you just a little bit by increment, pretty soon they can move you from being a libertarian kind of liberal person to an absolute cult leader or cult follower who will follow anything they're told, censor anything, attack anybody, you name it. And, and that's even what scientists call Facebook is the follower factory. And they can produce whatever they want. And it was all tested, I remember, 16 years ago, being allowed into the UT psychology department, restricted areas, and it was all about this. They had the monkeys and apes, 
I saw them over camera. They were in another facility in Bastrop. I was seeing them from 20 miles away, hooked all in. And they just had flicker rates, and they were having to watch television and then practicing manipulating brainwaves. Uh, and it was all for screen flicker. It was all DARPA funded. And I was only allowed maybe a minute to see it by someone that thought I should see it. This is an emergency warning to every man, woman, and child, every human on this planet. It is publicly available information that the tech giants have made the decision, working with the large central banks of the world, that under a social Darwinistic plan, it is very moral for them to bring in an AI system of social conditioning that will basically end the human life cycle as we know it and prepare the population for a phase out of at least 90%. That's in the public documents. Now Elon Musk has come out and warned everyone that the main tech giant heads are crazy. They worship AI gods and, belong, and believe that they're going to become AI gods. Now AI is active on the major social networks and is going past the testing phase into the intense phase of mimicking humans, posing as humans, so they can manipulate social groups and then completely cut you off from your real social group and then artificially use peer pressure to completely control you, to make you depressed, to make you alone, and to make you uh, rendered down uh, into a suicidal basket case. Then they're going to come in with suicide watch, suicide control, and then create a whole new medical industry of the victims, just like drug dealers sell you drugs and then sell you more drugs and then have you rob houses to get more drugs and basically make you their slaves. You will then be in, uh, caught in the medical system of Google, Facebook, and Twitter, which are now launching giant medical arms of themselves that will then process you, just like they process the cancer epidemic from what they've added to the food and water. And they never find the cure or find out why it's increasing. Uh, they will just then process you like Soylent Green uh, through the euthanasia program. And of course, you won't be productive, you won't be producing, uh, and so uh, you will opt uh, to then be chemically uh, euthanized, uh, and, and it'll be done with the spectacular drugs uh, that you, so the last few hours of your hallucinatory death uh, will be promised to be absolutely fabulous. And for the greater good of humanity, uh, your brain will be hooked to electrodes and things so that at least part of your consciousness, they'll first say in the first wave, can be uploaded to it for the great knowledge of humanity. So maybe we're not sure, but maybe you're not really dying. That'll be phase one once they launch main operations, I'd say within about 10 years. So I already pretty much figured all this out, and I've been contacted over the years. Everybody keeps saying, well, the Illuminati ever contacted anybody? They were asking Joe Rogan that the other day. He said, no, they never have. Or, or has the CIA ever contacted you? And he said no. Or, or and, and, I, and I use jokes because I went back to the start of this broadcast uh, to, uh, or, or the start of me breaking this down to a year ago on Joe talking about human animal hybrids and AI taking things over and all the rest of it. Now it sounded crazy, and now it's mainstream news. But see, I have been contacted by the different factions. I have communicated with the different factions. I've told you about this over the years, and I've discussed it. And so. A couple of weeks ago, I talked to a high-level former executive at Facebook. Uh, and then last night, I talked to one of the biggest individuals on Facebook uh, who's part of their big leadership program. And he said they're setting up this whole social program that's really going to be the human face of the AI censorship. And that the AI is going to phase out within a few years any human interaction in its, quote, algorithm and it'll be in lifetime control of everything you try to upload or say or do will first go through a filter. And it's already there. But this will be complete and absolute and total. And they've now admitted to the executives it is for population reduction. And to basically soft kill you and prepare you to want to be euthanized, like the cover of Newsweek, the case for killing granny. Or Bill Gates saying, if we kill grandma in the last year of life, you will be able to hire 10 teachers. They, they sell this some game. They sell this, the pie's only this size. And that's what's being sold, and then it's going to be, quote, run, a la the zeitgeist idea, by an independent computer, but it was set up and programmed with a mission to depopulate the Earth and save the planet from humans. And that's it. And what's crazy is it's now in the news because metaphysically, a lot of these people understand they have to warn you. And they're having second thoughts about it. They're having second thoughts because their children are growing up in this, and they're noticing that Bill Gates and 
Steve Jobs would not let their young children up till age, you know, 15 or whatever, have iPhones, have iPads, because he said that brain damaged them and controlled them and was designed to victimize them. But see, they have to tell you that in a little press release. Oh, I don't let my children have that. You shouldn't either. And all the articles saying you shouldn't do it, it's dangerous, it's making you depressed, it's lowering your IQ, it's making you suicidal. And now Facebook, Twitter, and Google are moving in to the stop suicide business. And then, oh, they'll get you into the system and the bioethicist to get you on some more drugs and things, and then, oh, you committed suicide. And see, even most of the executives won't know the full magnitude, but at the highest levels, they sit around, as Bill Joy said, as Sean Parker said, uh, as Elon Musk said, why the future doesn't need us, 1999, full cover story in Wired. And Bill Joy, co-owner of Sun Microsystems, said, I went to a meeting with the head tech people, and they voted and had a consensus to not just entertain people and phase them out slowly and let them destroy the earth, but we made the decision to go ahead, and, and I don't agree with it, and wipe everybody out. Now, you know Bill Joy didn't get let in on all the meetings after that. His partner I saw on PBS, though, that same year going, some people don't want to merge the machines, I do. I look forward to putting not just a chip in my son's hand, but in my young four-year-old son's brain. And back then, that was all, ooh, now it's ABC News. You will all take chips soon. Why 10,000 U.S. Army troops for depression had chips put in their brains. Why there's a new vaccine we give you that stops depression. It goes into each part of the brain. They're, they're giving people lobotomies. It's already here. And then I've got a stack of news that I mentioned earlier where any of you could go read it, where they admit all this. And then I'm talking to these people, and they're scared. They're like, our kids are getting hurt by it, even though we don't let them have it, Alex. It's like everybody looks sick, looks like they're dying. People aren't talking. Uh, it's, it's, it's breaking up all the relationships. Is there a way to fix it? What do we do? I want to go public, but they're going to kill me, Alex. And this is like Soylent Green, where the executive blows the whistle on what they're doing, and the guy comes with the crowbar and goes, they told me to tell you, sorry, but you're unreliable. Whack in the head. I mean, I'm having Soylent Green discussions with people's names you'd know. And that's where we're at, baby. And so I'm going to say this. This is so horrible that it actually makes me feel good, and I'm going to explain the psychology. I'm sad it's happening, but as a man being lied about, being attacked, seeing all the evil and corruption, it hurts me and gets to me. But then when I realize these people are all just being programmed and used, it makes me feel sorry for them and realize we're all in this together, and I hope we make it out of it, and I hope people wake up and we can change this. So I forgive BuzzFeed and David Hogg and... All these people, look at what a horrible creature Hillary Clinton is, what a horrible demon. I can't forgive her because she's totally turned over to evil, but I'm just saying, I, I, I do this for love, I don't do it for hate, and 90%'s been for love, 10%'s been for hate, but I'm giving up the other 10% of the hate. I'm giving it up because we're all in this together, and God, this is ugly and horrible, and it's leading us somewhere so horrible. It's not leading us towards Valhalla or Nirvana or heaven. It's leading us towards Hades, towards hell, towards oblivion, towards annihilation. And it's all the sickest people came up with this, stole our great minds, built this thing that's way more dangerous than hydrogen bombs. Because you know what? Hydrogen bombs could end the planet and end all life, but we have a spirit. It's been proven scientifically, and we'd go on to be with God, some of us. This thing is meant to put you from birth into an artificial system to make sure you never have free will and that may be able to capture the soul. And, and the revelation says God won't let it go that far because God's all about free will. And I know this is real and I know God's real. So I put it all in Christ right now. But I forgive all the people that have attacked me. And I mean that, not trying to sound big. I realized it last night this morning because the people I'm talking to are crying, okay? The tech guys are scared, okay? There's one thing to talk about this. It's here, baby. Everybody walled off alone being attacked. Conservatives go in to just try to promote basic human operations. And they get bullied by a bunch of bots. They keep fighting. And that's why they hate Christians, real Christians, is because and that's why China's banned Buddhists as well, because they've got something internal that you can't program. And so 
they know that it can't be overwritten and it stands in the way of, of them just getting everybody to just acquiesce to political correctness and all of it and language and saying there's not males and females. This is like an alien takeover, but it is. AI is alien, it's artificial, it's total war, it's total weaponization, it's total commitment for total power. And that means overriding everything on earth, taking it over and a new silicon based life form system. This is a total rewrite of the entire civilization. As I've told you for years. And now you see it in the movies and things like Annihilation, where it's like a living nanotech rewriting the planet. That's really what they're already working on. We'll be back. I've recently talked to a former top executive, high-level executive at Facebook, and just yesterday, one of the top people on Facebook. And they're both struggling with wanting to go public and expose that it's designed to make you depressed, designed to take control of your life, and designed soon to have no one you really interact with, only fake avatars and bots, and then you have to basically pay to have access to any of your friends and family. Get you into the cell, get you into the control arm, and then fully take control of you, and it's designed to basically make life completely miserable so you will then accept going into a totally virtual reality system. First, they capture you in a bad virtual reality. Then they offer a better escape to get you trapped into a deeper labyrinth. And they admit this is the plan. And in China and Dubai and everywhere else, they are putting brain chips in the population. Uh, in Sweden, they say you gotta have a chip in your hand to get on the train. First half human robot in Dubai. I'm gonna cover that more coming up. You know, it's funny that just happened. Hit pause. Uh, crew, if, if, if you're TV viewers, uh, you can see it for radio, I'll describe it. Will you shrink that image so people can see it fully, please? Thank you. I uh, designed and photoshopped the image that you see that was a magazine cover. Uh, and it is, uh, that's from about five, six years ago. It is a mountain of human skulls with, in the dark, darkness, an all-seeing eye with a HAL 9000 red eye. And out of the darkness comes some wires into the facsimile of man, into a, 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 a android that symbolizes the new man that rises out of the ashes. Now, that is the announcement of the globalist this year of what they're actually building. Now, notice I told them, get that ready. I want to describe it like an angler fish, how it hangs its little light out so things at 10,000 feet in the sea believe it's food, photoplankton, and then it can destroy you and eat you. I was already going to have them ready with the angler fish and have it fade into that image. But then they walked in and said, you ought to cover this guy, the first half human robot in Dubai. Do that again. That is incredible. And it fit perfectly. We weren't even intending to do this. See, that's God working right there. Look at that. And it's perfect. He's saying, look, I can hear and see things, and it gives me all this great stuff in my body. Uh, I'm, a, I, I'm a cyborg. Uh, it's so much fun. Here, swim into my mouth. He is the anglerfish light. He is the photosynthesis light. He is dangling out, doesn't even know it, to, to make people think it's cool and trendy to go into this system. I remember in Wash Tech, uh, I don't know, about 18 years ago, back when the Washington Post put out a, uh, it was a monthly tech magazine, and I, and I got a copy of it, and it had a CIA former deputy director saying, oh, we're pushing the whole body modification movement to get you to accept brain chips and stuff soon. We'll have the whole cyborg movement next. He said about 20 years. We'll just roll it out. Chips in the hand, chips in the head. And I'm not against you if you want earrings or studs in your lips or whatever. Some of that, you know, looks good on people. People are like, oh, how dare you be against my tattoos? I'm not saying that. They pushed this, just like they pushed the hip-hop gangster rap to put blacks in prison. That's been declassified. They pushed all of this to bring in full, total control. And that's very bad factions in the CIA. There are good factions that mainly were doing the war fighting who now see what the technocrats have done, and they're like, my God, this is pure evil. So you're in a science fiction movie with the Borg taken over, and that's their own admissions. So here's some of the headlines. Watch the first half-human robot in Dubai, the malicious use of artificial intelligence, forecasting, prevention, and mitigation by the top universities. Look it up. Facebook looks to AI to monitor harmful behavior. So we're bringing AI in.
So make sure you don't hurt yourself or get depressed or talk about conservatism or God, because that's all harmful. It's whatever we say is harmful. The Guardian, former Facebook executive, social media is ripping society apart. It's designed to. Our minds can be hijacked. The tech insiders who fear the smartphone dystopia. Everything I told you 10 years ago. So the news of decades to come today. And that's why they hate us. And that's why they want to shut down. But it doesn't matter. We've already completed much of our mission. Everything else is now gravy. The last 35 minutes of the broadcast, I dedicated to a huge stack of mainstream news saying the military's taking brain chips, half-human robots are being launched in Dubai, actual cyborgs. Six top universities were joined by government experts warning of the malicious use of artificial intelligence, forecasting prevention and mitigation. They admit Facebook and all of its design to make you depressed and make you alone. All of this is being admitted. And I went over a lot of this. Oh my God, what have we done? Some early Facebook employees regret the monster they created. Well, that's because they were compartmentalized mid-level. Facebook is using AI to help predict when users may be suicidal, but then their own executives say it's meant to make you depressed to control you, but create the problem, offer the solution. Facebook's first president on Facebook, God only knows what it's doing to our children's brains. Well, we know it's hurting them. AI just beat top lawyers at their own game. And I got a call a couple weeks ago, and I didn't know what to say or do about it. <sighs> because people call me up crying out for help. Top movie stars, top rock stars, top politicians, top tech leaders. And they always want to have a private conversation or two with me. And they're trying to find the secret to beating it and what to do and who controls it and who's above them. And they think there's like some secret Illuminati that has all the answers. And there's not. The Bible calls it the mystery of evil. There's a force, a energy, a spirit. One of good, one of bad. One of light, one of darkness. And it animates through bad people and it builds what it wants to build. And you've got to understand that till you understand why Kings and queens don't know why this is happening. I've been contacted by British royalty 10 years ago, very close to the crown, saying, what do we do? We don't want to be part of this. I know medical doctors that have treated them and have told me the same stuff. I've been contacted by heads of state. I've, I've talked to them all. I've talked to people right at the very top, right below the top of Facebook, who, who are scared. And it's not because I'm that special. Everybody else says nothing's going on. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful. World government doesn't exist. Now, world government's a great thing. Let's break the family up. These compartmentalized executives only have pieces of it, and they're wondering what's really going on as they see it's very dark, it's very bad, it's hurting everybody, and they're going, I heard you say this 20 years ago and thought you knew part of what you were saying, but thought you were alarmist. You're right. What is the plan? Who are they? How is it running? Why is it so evil? Why can't we stop it? Because it ain't human. That's why. Nobody knows how to stop it. And now it's got AI jacked into everything. The Bible says it fell from the heavens. We're in space. Two and two, baby. It's advanced. It don't like us. But it's going to use us to build some stuff first because we're builders. Look, look, at, look at everything we build. It's all, it's all we do. Some of the globalists believe we're actually nanotech put here. We're intelligent nanotech, and we're now just reaching mission phase. I'm just here to tell you, when this thing's over with, 90% of you are going to be dead. And the rest of you aren't going to be human anymore. And the decision's been made. So you can make your jokes all day and roll your eyes if you're Comedy Central writer or you're some you know, guy at Media Matters sitting there guzzling your soy latte, making soy boy faces, thinking it's all cute. It's 
It's not cute. It's not funny. And again, I go back to a clip I saw just a few days ago of Joe Rogan. And I meant to send Nico the clip. I forget the name. And the uh, the, the uh, guy was asking, Grixel, Crixel, I've met him before. I forget how he's pronounced his name. And he was asking him, are you really in the Illuminati? Have you really been approached by the CIA? And that was the video I was searching for when I found the other one. And Joe explains, no, he talks to a lot of big executives and people, and they don't know what's going on, but they're scared too. And that, that's what I'm telling you is, is that only at the Rothschild Rockefeller level, and it's a very high advanced DARPA science levels, do they have an idea of what's going on? And they wrote about it in the 1860s right through and envisioned it all. And they are a priest class of very secretive inbred individuals out of Germany, France, Switzerland, and the UK mainly. And the Chinese have agreed to the plan. The Japanese are scared to death and have agreed to it. And only maybe 50 people at the top ever know the full plan. But in intelligence, you can always look at what's being set up and get most of it. So we've reverse engineered a lot of it, and 20 years later, our reverse engineering turned out to be remarkably accurate because I read a lot of the white papers and things that their underlings were saying, putting out plans of what they were doing, but generally with another cover story. But you could then look at a Manhattan Project and its cover stories and figure out what was really going on if you knew the pieces. So... That's why I get contacted by high-level folks, you know, and, and the government, CIA, corporations, because they don't know. But you, you don't think they let the go whole government know what's going on. You don't think they actually want intelligence agencies going, knowing what's going on, do you? No, they want them to have missions and be highly scrutinized and controlled and, 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 and so busy bureaucratically that they don't ever get the full picture of what's going on. And then they're building giant spy grids and tentacles into things and mandating all the hubs and back doors and Trojan horses so that the real systems of Google, Facebook, and Twitter, and now Apple merging with the Chinese government, can launch a huge AI war that's already going on, deciding survival of the fittest, because that's their religion, survival of the fittest with this giant AI war that we're in. And then when the AI war is over... They're just going to decide how to wipe us out. So the Chinese government said in Mao's day, he said, go ahead and nuke us. We got too many people. So the globalists love the Chinese. The Chinese elite are like, we're ready to wipe out 99% of these people. We're sick of them. We hate them. Because anybody you feed on and you use as slaves, you metaphysically hate. You ever wonder why a bank robber for no reason will just kind of break some guy's nose or whatever? Because you feel bad about what you're doing, so you go ahead and lash out at them for what you've done. I'm going to go to Roger Stone. We come back with some big breaking news. I just thought that we should tell any men out there and any women who weren't arrested in their development by the low attention span television set and the red dye number five and the fluoride and the chlorine and the bromide and the... MSG and all the rest of the crap that was all medicalized and put in there on purpose, all declassified to brain damage you and create ADHD and TV shows to shrink the attention span now down to three seconds. It used to be about an hour. It's now down to about a few seconds. Goldfish is seven seconds. We're about three seconds in the new studies, the average person. And, and it's, it's just over. If you understand that a large part of the population has gone already and they just get a program of we're winners, we're piling on someone, we're going after Alex Jones, he did this, and it's not even true. And then 10 seconds later, they're on to the whole new delusion, and you look at them, and they look like they're dying, but they don't care because they're dead. They're dead already. Oh. Okay, so it's humans against the globalist. It's humans against the AI takeover. And for those of you that can shake out of your control and shake out of your programming and realize that we may have a chance to at least sue for peace with the AI system and have some type of human future. But right now, the globalists don't respect you and are in the process of chemically, biologically killing you. Now, just briefly, 
My dad is an oral surgeon and dentist. He's, he's about to retire. And about 15 years ago, he heard me ranting and raving about fluoride and toothpaste and how it causes brain damage and lower IQ and dental fluorosis. And he said, son, I don't care who you have on the air. That's a bunch of bull. You need fluoride or you die. And I actually showed him what was in the water supply in the floor. He said, this is incredible. This is Grignard reagents, heavy metals. They're, they're covering for it, calling it fluoride under law with a loophole to dump toxic waste in the food and water. Exactly. Now, CNN had to admit last month, in utero and in children, massive IQ reductions. Well, six years ago, the EPA said reduce it in water by half. You don't drink your sunscreen. But hydrofluorosilicic acid is a hopped up version of fluoride. It's, 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 it's been turned into an acid. And it's an adjuvant. It's very toxic. But there is the CNN headline that fluoride in the water and in toothpaste is causing IQs to drop precipitously. And for seven years, the American Dental Association says don't brush children's teeth until age six with it. Why does it say nursery water then at the store with added fluoride? And they didn't add calcium fluoride, boys and girls. They added hydrofluorosilicic acid.